Hi, I'm Mary Beth Quinn, and I'm a mixed media collage artist from Nashville, Tennessee. Today, I wanted to talk about something that has really had a huge influence on my art production and my art practice, and that is the concept of rushing. This piece that I started with here is a piece that I finished a number of months ago, or I thought I had finished. It started with um, two other pieces of the same size. I liked the result that I got with the other two pieces, and this one just sort of kept lingering and kept not coming together. And looking back now, I realized I finally just got to a place where I was just done with it. I just thought this needs to be done. It's part of this three painting series. And I just, for about a minute, put it up for sale, even though I didn't really like it. And I've thought a lot about this. Why, why would this be? Why, what is the voice that dictates that I say something is done before it's done. What all is involved there? So the other day I pulled this off the wall. It's a 24 by 24 canvas. And I like a lot of the things going on on this painting, but it was in no way done. So I just pulled it out and I thought I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on it again. So I started out, as you saw, with just pulling out some paint. And I thought I've got a good base of a lot of texture on this painting, a lot of collage papers, and some really interesting things. So what I'm gonna do is just do a partial paint over and just add some paint marks and sort of start again. And I actually like painting this way I like it a lot, but I really do, and, and I've talked about this in past videos, I can really struggle with this idea of, but I'm painting over something that I put a lot of hours into. There's a lot of materials on this painting and I'm just gonna cover over them. So the more that I thought about this voice that objects, I realized that it had this tone of urgency to it. Something that really did not foster creativity. It did not foster taking time with it. And when I really examined it, what I found is that it was a voice that encouraged me to rush. It was, a, it was that voice that caused me to say that this painting was done before it was done earlier, you know, back earlier in the year. And it's a voice that, if I'm honest, is chattering in my brain a lot. So I thought I would just talk about it today, just, you know, full disclosure and assuming that I'm probably not the only one. Um, and just sort of examine you know, my thoughts about this whole idea of hurrying up to get done or moving forward, moving through something just because you've put a lot of time and materials into it, as opposed to evaluating, but is it really done? Hi, I know these videos can go a bit fast sometimes, but if you're interested in this process, I've created a class called Introduction to Collage, Learning to Paint with Paper. You can go at your own pace and I'll teach you everything you need to know to get started in this process that I use of layering these transparent tissue papers. So I would love to have you join me. So really quickly, what you see me doing here is just taking some pieces from an older painting. I've done this just as of late, just enjoyed tearing apart an old paper piece, tearing off the backing and just using those for some botanical elements. That one right there is pretty thick, so it's got a lot of texture to it, but I wasn't really sure if I liked how it blended with what I already had on the canvas, but 
I'm just going with it at this point. I'm definitely in the generative phase where I'm just generating a lot of stuff to work with. There was already a lot of stuff here before I even painted over it. So now it's just about adding more things and seeing where it goes from here. So while you're watching me do this, I thought I would just go through my thought process about this concept of rushing. Like what is this urge and this impulse to rush through? And why do I have a voice that tells me I've got to get it done? Where does this come from? The interesting thing is that this voice seems to have one objective. And I know if you're like me, you have many voices that visit you maybe while you're creating. But this one has the one objective, it seems, of moving me through the process as fast as possible. So the project is completed, I can check the box, and it's done. That painting is done. When really, if I examine this voice, if I were to personify it, let's say, it would be a personality that really has no interest in seeing the creative process through. It doesn't seem to have a curiosity about what could be if I stick with it. It doesn't seem to have a desire to allow that painting time to, to develop, to give it its due, to give it space and time to reach its highest potential. Instead, it seems to be, I don't know, about efficiency and economy or something. Some things I don't even understand where they come from. There's an anxiety to it, actually. So I know that in our culture, we do prize doing things very quickly. People that are efficient, that move quickly, that can get things done quickly are actually given a lot of value in our culture, <laughs> which doesn't really bode well for me because I am a slow mover. And, and I know that in some sectors with some jobs, moving quickly and being really, really efficient is, is very valuable. You know, if you're in need of a, some sort of emergency surgery, you want the guy or the, or the girl that can really do the job and do it effectively and quickly. But, you know, I don't know that this belongs necessarily in the creative process. You know, I remember as a child when we were learning times tables in my class, the culmination of that learning segment was a time test. It was a speed test that you would get to see if you had adequately learned your times tables. And I can still remember, I can feel it in my body, the stress that that caused when that test came out. Like my heart would sink because I knew that I knew the work, I knew my times tables, but there was something about only having a certain amount of time to complete the test that just made me lock up and not perform well. I'm a slow mover, a slow bloomer, I'm a ruminator, which makes it even more puzzling and surprising that I have this prominent voice in my head. It's present and interjecting itself into my creative process a lot and it has since I began painting so it's really worth it for me to look at it if I can't discover let's say it's its origins or figure out what its purpose is the best that I can do I guess is really to form my argument for taking time so that when the voice arises I have practiced my knowing that the creative process works differently. I can just let that voice be there and carry on with my process. I've heard the, the author, Liz Gilbert, say, 
while, while talking about her thoughts about fear, I think it was fear, that she finally quit resisting fearful thoughts and instead just realized that it wasn't going to accomplish anything. The resistance was not going to accomplish anything. So she just learned to make room for it. So in her words, she said something like, so now I just let fear come along for the trip. You know, but I tell it, it has to sit in the back seat and it doesn't get to pick the music or the snacks, <laughs> but it does get to come along for the trip. And I think there's something to that. What we resist just soaks up all of our energy in that fight, as opposed to just saying, this voice is here, recognize it when it happens, and then just make room for it to be in the room. But then carry on with my methodical creative process anyway. It's not easy, but I'm sort of surprised to find that it is entirely possible. You know, this is a major thought, and I've only realized recently how much it comes into play. So here are my reasons that I don't have to let this voice drive. It gets to be in the room, but it doesn't get to decide anything. The first reason is the basic fact that there is literally no rush. Now, sometimes, I know, there are practical matters that um, that determine that we need to move quickly or we've got deadlines, maybe there's a contest or um, a gallery that you need to send some paintings to. I know this is can be part of an artist's career. Um, but I now understand that what my role is as I'm painting, I used to think I was the one with the plan and I was the executor of the plan. And then when it didn't turn out well or I didn't like it, then I was also the judge and the jury. That really raked me over the coals for it not being so great. Well, now I realize that I'm just on the creative journey. I'm the lucky one that gets to follow the trail that gets to glue little pieces of paper to this surface right here as I get an impulse to do so. I get to see what happens when I do this and to see where it goes from here and how it unfolds. And if it takes longer, then I'm the person that gets to say that that's okay. I get to decide to put this away for a while and work on other things instead or I might decide that it needs yet another paint over. I get to decide many things about it, but how long it takes, that's not necessarily in my hands. I'm just there to do the work. Those thoughts feel way better to me than the voice that tells me to rush through. So that's what I serve. My job is to be curious, not expedient. It's like, a part of my brain has a time tally that this painting started months ago and now I'm doing a paint over. So that part of my brain that tallies the time and says, this is taking too long. You're investing too much here, too much loss with no return, which is hilarious because that sounds more like an accountant and I am far from being <laughs> anything like an accountant. But when I'm being hard on myself, I guess I do this. You know, how long a painting takes is out of my hands. So if I'm devoted to the process, I have to make peace with that. And then my second reason for not letting this voice run the show, not letting it drive, is that I just get to keep exploring. It is about exploration and investigation and experimentation and then eventually refinement. I realize now that if your practice is lively and healthy, you will find yourself cycle through all of these regularly. And everything changed for me when I realized that this cycle was natural, it was my job, 
and it takes time. So I treat myself, I guess, less like an employee that needs to be efficient, expedient or productive and more like someone that has taken a lifelong quest to develop, explore, and maybe express some emotion. The forces at work in this job are a bit like the weather. You know, you can't control it, but you work with it and you welcome it. So you see me here just making some botanical leaf formations on some tissue. And I'm just going to add those in to a few places on this painting. So they just peek through. This is what I do love about plants and flowers and nature is they just poke through and show up when you least expect it. You might only see partial parts of it. Sometimes you'll get a full glimpse, but it's very whimsical, I think. So I've still got a ways to go, but I'm really enjoying the start that I got. And I think I'll be taking my time. <laughs> you do learn these things as you go along. The rushing for no reason at all is just an impulse. And I may never understand it. But what's wonderful to realize is that I don't have to obliterate it. And like I said, I, I may never understand the origins of it, but I really can just let it be there. That's such a revolutionary thing. You can just let some of these things that you think or feel that really make moving forward difficult, you can just let them be there. Give them a moment. And then they seem to subside a little bit, quiet down. Maybe they just want to be heard. Who knows? Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and I know I enjoyed making it and talking to you. And if you would like to join me in my collage class, I would love nothing more than that. It's getting really great reviews. I'm so happy about it. A lot of people are just really loving this process like I do. And you can also sign up to hear about future classes or get on my list where I'll just pop in your inbox and send you encouragement and some tips along the way. And you can also get my list of my favorite art supplies. Who doesn't love art supplies? And if you'd like to check out what I'm working on currently, just come to Instagram, Maribeth Quinn Art, or come to my website.